everyone. Out on a fishing trip today. Uh, one of my local fishers, uh, local to my area. Thought I'd do a product review on a piece of equipment or a bit of kit I've had for a couple of years now, and I really like it. The Frontier Stone. Let's get on with that. Right then. First things first, we'll take the fold the legs out. Ooh, held in place with this little split pin. Very neat idea. Fold it into position and then put the pin back in to another hole and that locks it into place. It's the same for all three, all three legs. Like so drop the pin through and locked in. Try the first the front one as well, might as well over here. The, the, uh, the stovepipe sections or the chimney sections are all stored inside. I think you get about five with it. Um, I'll show you them in a bit. Right, so that's the legs out way or put out. Now we'll stand it up. Right, so we'll just get the, um, the stovepipe sections out. So they're all stoked. This little shelf here that sits at the front, it's got two, two uh, housings for it, mounts there. So, one, oh, that's a spark arrester. Uh, you have to, well, I had to buy it separately. Sometimes when you buy it, it comes with it, but you'd pay more for it. Um, one, two, three. Now this one, this is the one that goes directly on into the stove. Now this one has a, a damper on it, you can see that. For, uh, for damping it down in the evening, and I'll show you that later. We'll damp it down and then I'll restart it in the morning. So that's one, two, three, four, yeah. So five stove pipe sections. Right, so I'm going to put the thing together now, put the stove pipe up and through my tarp. I don't know if you see in the, in the tarp there I've put a stove pipe jack there. It's a silicon one. Um, you know people think well surely that's going to melt the, the nylon tarp but it doesn't. I you know I've used it several times uh, without any problem whatsoever. It doesn't even get that warm to be honest. Uh, the one precaution I did take and I'll show you the underside is um, here I don't know if you can see I've just put a a piece of leather between that and the metal metal plate to, to bolt it on and that absorbs some of the heat um, you know or helps absorb some of it but I've had absolutely no trouble with it at all um, so yeah that works well I like to keep everything undercover now a lot of people would set it up with the, the stove sticking out the side of the tarp so to speak with uh, you know the stove pipe sort of going up here but um, I think that's more dangerous than, than that way to be honest. At least it's kept, you know, it's, it's kept in place. And provided you've got your tarp set up properly and uh, you know pegged well down, so you know any wind, you know it, uh, you don't get any problem with that. Then um, yeah, I, as I say, I've had absolutely no trouble with it at all. So on we go.
package was that? Another little feature that um, often goes unnoticed is if you notice in the feet here, you've got two little holes, you know, one there and one there. These are really handy um, in, uh, in windy conditions because you can get, uh, I'll use a couple of wire tent pegs and kind of you know, cross them over, one in that way and one in that way to make a, so it really holds it down. And on all three legs, that gives you a little bit of extra stability in the wind, you know, things don't go flying off somewhere. So, yeah, another little feature. So it's now all set up now. Um, this is the, you know, the first section to go onto the, the flue melting, if you like. It's the um, one with the damper in it. You know, open, closed, simple as that. Um, you know, through the tarp. Uh, it does have you know, a removable plate on the top. This is really handy for, for cooking. Um, if you want some, sort of, you know, a lot of heat fast, um, you can buy um, a water boiler that fits around the, the pipe here, so it sits around here with a little brass tap on it. You know, a very good bit of kit, I suppose, but I, I don't really, you know, about 100 quid. And I, to be honest, I just use, I use this old kettle, this old teapot here, and just sit that on there, and it does exactly the same job. Probably gives me the same amount of water. So, you know, it's a matter of personal choice. I sooner have the, the space on the top, I think, and then I can take that off and on, you know, you know whenever and as I need it. So, I'll light it a bit later and then I'll bring you back for that. Do a bit of fishing now. <laughs> it's a lovely little lake. The only problem is it's, uh, it's traffic noise and we're really close to the A45. You can hear the traffic roaring past. It does that sort of day and night. And uh, the local sort of bike enthusiasts do tend to use it as a drag strip. So it can be quite noisy, but you know, for all intents and purposes and for, for this video to demonstrate this stove, it's ideal. Plus you have to get a bit of fishing in as well. That's what we're looking for. utilize my, my spare mini tripod or my backpacking tripod I should say use that to uh, hold up the browns bag and process some lake water and boil that up I can use that as grey water I'll, I'll use it as grey water for washing up and washing and stuff like that all right time to have to light this up so None of it being a bit bushcrafty, trying to get the old birch bark bag out. Um, and that's plenty, absolutely low. I mean, that's too much actually. A little bit of that, I don't need that much. Um, <coughs> normally, I suppose I'd just like this. Yeah, you know, chuck a fire lighter in there and a bit of a few small twigs, etc., with um, kindling and get it going, but you know. Be a bit bushcrafty with it today. <laughs> right, I'm going to load this in. I'm using a a um, oops, a head torch here. To, oops, no, that's just gone off. 
the hedgehog here because it's in you know deep shadow or maybe a reflector from the sun or, I don't know whatever so so you see what's going on so I load that little sort of mini fire in there first then little sticks around it and then the bigger stuff at the back you know obviously the, the draft then will, will carry the flames back and, and get the whole thing lit so we'll have a go at that in a minute I'm loading stuff in, you know, the thin end toward the front so that it'll it'll catch. I've got a load of sticks and stuff down here, little wee bits like that, you know. Get those in there. So all the little sort of twiggy bits at the front so they catch. Try and throw a spark into it and see see if we can get something going. And there we go. Some more of these up the back. Close the door so that uh, it draws the flames back through the chimney and we're good to go. The smoke coming off a hot plate is, um, is vegetable oil. I've, um, I'm trying to rust proof it a bit by you know, putting a layer of carbonised oil on top of it, you know, as you do with um, you know, a, a, a frying pan. As far as this goes um, we've been you know burning the stove for about an hour and a half now and you know it's barely tepid So we'll start that whole process off with um, put some whole spices in. In this case, it's uh, a bit of star anise, cinnamon, and a clove. We'll cook that around for a while. Flavour the oil. Lovely. I'm going to get some onions in. Now, uh, 
starts to get good and brown and start to caramelise. Right, the onions are doing well. I'll just have a look at the fire. There we go. Yeah. Now that's going well. We'll keep a good fire like that going for a little while. While we get this initial cooking phase, you know, sort of underway. And uh, then just let it die down for the final stages so that it simmers and cooks slowly uh, so all the flavours can gel. Oh, and by the way, I'm cooking right on the flame with this. I'll just put some garlic in here. And the next a bit of cumin. Turmeric, salt, chili powder, and uh, roasted ground fenugreek, or methi. Cook all those spices up. Let them cook for a little while. It's only about 30 seconds. Now we get these tomatoes and these will bring the temperature down and add some, some liquid to it. <coughs> Let that heat drop away. I've got some more tomato in there. I like tomatoes. Drop the water in there to stop it catching. If at any time, you know, when you're cooking on this, uh, on these things, and uh, it's just going a bit out of control, it's just too hot, you can always just take the pan off and, you know, set it to one side for a little while, wait for the fire to cool down a bit, and then you can uh, put it back on. That'll be alright with that. Oh look, smoke on the water. Pop a lid on that, let it bubble away for a bit. Okay, that's reduced down, lovely. Nice thick unctuous sauce, that, look at that, lovely. As I say, you can eat that on its own. However, today, I'm going to put some chicken in. Some chicken thigh. Skinned. Not bone, just sort of... Well, <laughs> chicken's pretty bone. But, uh, Cut them down a bit. There we go. That's going to be something else. There, 
that's perfect now. See, normally I'd have put a small pot sort of here and, and boiled some rice along with it, and it's really lovely with rice. But you know, where's the fun in that when you're doing a product review? So, there we have it. Three of your five a day. Chips, chicken curry, and whiskey. Lovely. Sun's going down. Everything's starting to settle down. <laughs> you see that in the distance. Huge car has jumped out of the lake. Once you've got it going like that, big old coals in the bottom, you can burn water in it. Now it's just a matter of just chucking logs in, just keep it going through the night, you know, keep it keep everything warm. Lovely. I might make some bread a bit later actually for the for the morning. Put a nice bit of bacon, that's a bacon roll or something like that. Look at that, if you look closely, you can actually see it moving. <laughs> 